Hello, dear listeners, and welcome to our podcast. Today, we're going to talk about a great way to improve your English using podcasts. Whether you're just starting to learn English or you've been studying for a while, podcasts are an excellent tool. They help you practice listening, improve your vocabulary, and learn how native speakers talk in everyday conversations. I'm Sophia. And I'm James. We're really excited to share some useful tips on how you can master English by listening to podcasts. It's one of the best ways to get better at English while having fun, right, Sophia? Absolutely. You can listen while you're doing other things like walking, cooking, or even relaxing. But James, let's start by explaining why podcasts are such a powerful tool for language learners. Good idea. One of the biggest advantages of podcasts is that they're easy to access. You don't need a lot of equipment, just a phone or a computer. You can listen to podcasts anytime and anywhere. Also, there are many different types of podcasts available. You can choose topics that you are interested in, which makes learning more enjoyable. That's right. And the best part is, podcasts are usually created by native speakers. So, when you listen to them, you hear how people really speak English. You can catch the rhythm of the language, learn new expressions, and get used to different accents. It's like having a mini English class in your pocket. Yes, and let's not forget about listening comprehension. By listening to English podcasts regularly, your brain starts to process the language faster. You begin to understand spoken English more easily, and over time, you'll notice that you don't need to translate everything in your head. This helps you become more fluent. Exactly, but I think a lot of learners might wonder, how do I start? It's easy to feel overwhelmed with so many podcasts out there. So let's give our listeners some simple steps to follow. First, you should choose a podcast that matches your English level. For example, if you're at an elementary or intermediate level, pick something that's not too fast and uses clear language. That's a key point. If the podcast is too difficult, it might frustrate you, and that's not what we want. But if it's too easy, you won't learn anything new. So, finding the right balance is important. Many podcasts are designed specifically for English learners, so look for those if you're just starting. Yes, and another good tip is to focus on the topics you love. If you enjoy what you're listening to, you'll be more motivated to keep going. Do you like sports, movies, or cooking? There's probably a podcast for that. Listening to topics you care about helps you stay interested and learn more without even realizing it. That's so true, and don't worry if you don't understand everything at first. It's normal to miss some words or phrases, especially when you're starting. The more you listen, the more you'll catch. You'll start to pick up on familiar words and phrases and soon it'll become easier. Yes, and I think it's also helpful to listen to each episode more than once. The first time, you can just enjoy it and get the general idea. The second time, you might want to focus more on the details like how words are pronounced or the way the speakers form sentences. It's a great way to reinforce what you've learned. Absolutely. Another great tip is to pause and repeat what you hear. If you hear a sentence or a phrase that's interesting, pause the podcast and try to say it out loud. This can really help improve your speaking skills. You'll get used to how native speakers say things and you can practice speaking more naturally. That's one of my favorite tips. It's like having your own speaking practice session. Plus, it helps build your confidence when speaking in English. And speaking of practice, another thing you can do is write down new words or phrases you learn while listening. You can create your own vocabulary list and review it later. Yes, and don't just write the words, try to use them in sentences. This helps you remember them better. You can even try to use those new words when you're speaking with someone in English or if you're in an English class, try using them with your teacher or classmates. Great advice. And I think one final tip for now is to make listening a daily habit. The more often you listen, 
the faster you'll improve. You don't have to listen for hours just 10 or 15 minutes a day can make a big difference. It's all about consistency. The more you expose yourself to the language, the more familiar it becomes. That's exactly it. And podcasts are perfect for this because you can listen while you're on the go. It doesn't feel like studying, it's just part of your day. So even if you have a busy schedule, you can always fit in some time to listen. And the best part is, you can listen at your own pace. You can pause, rewind, and listen again if you need to. That's something you can't always do in a live conversation. It gives you more control over your learning process, which is really helpful for building confidence. Now that we've talked about why podcasts are so great for learning English, let's dive deeper into how you can use them effectively. One of the most important things to remember is that learning a language takes time. So, while podcasts are fun and convenient, you have to be patient with yourself. The goal is to make steady progress, not to be perfect overnight. Exactly. And one of the first things to do after you choose a podcast is to set realistic goals. For example, if you're new to using podcasts for learning, you might start by listening to one episode a week. As you get more comfortable, you can increase that to two or three episodes a week. The key is to set a pace that works for you. That's a great point, Sophia. If you set your goals to high in the beginning, you might feel discouraged if you can't keep up. But if you set small, achievable goals, you'll feel good every time you complete them. This will motivate you to keep going. And remember, even listening to just a few minutes each day is better than doing nothing at all. Yes, and it's important to enjoy the process. Language learning is a journey, and every step counts. Don't worry if you don't understand everything right away. Just focus on what you can learn from each episode. Every time you listen, you're improving your English even if you don't realize it. Another tip for getting the most out of podcasts is to take notes. It might sound simple, but writing things down helps you remember them. You can jot down new words, phrases, or even interesting grammar points that you hear. Later, you can review these notes and try to use what you've learned in your own conversations. Absolutely. And speaking of conversations, podcasts can also help you get better at understanding different types of English. For example, sometimes you'll hear informal language, slang, or idiomatic expressions that aren't always taught in textbooks. These are the kinds of things that native speakers use every day, and listening to podcasts helps you become familiar with them. Yes, native speakers don't always speak in perfect sentences either. They might use fillers like a, uh, um, or like. They might also speak fast or mumble a bit. Podcasts expose you to this natural way of speaking, so you're better prepared for real-life conversations. You'll get used to hearing these little differences, and over time, you'll understand them without even thinking about it. Exactly! And if you ever come across a word or phrase that you don't understand, don't be afraid to look it up. This is where your notes come in handy. You can pause the podcast, write down the word, and then use a dictionary or a translation app to find out what it means. The more you do this, the more your vocabulary will grow. And here's another fun idea you can try to summarize what you've heard after listening to an episode. This doesn't have to be a long summary. You can just write or say a few sentences about what the podcast was about. This helps you practice using English in your own words, which is a great way to strengthen your understanding. That's a fantastic idea. It also helps you remember the main points of the episode, so you don't forget what you learned. And if you want to challenge yourself, you can even try to explain what the podcast was about to a friend or family member. Teaching someone else what you've learned is one of the best ways to make sure you really understand it. Definitely. And don't forget that you can control the speed of the podcast, too. If the speakers are talking to fast, most podcast apps have a feature that lets you slow down the audio. This can be really helpful when you're trying to catch every word. 
On the other hand, if you're feeling confident, you can try speeding it up to challenge yourself. Yes, that's a great way to adjust the difficulty level to match your current skill. And I think another thing that's really helpful is to listen to different types of podcasts. For example, you might listen to a conversation between two people in one episode and then switch to a storytelling podcast in the next. The variety helps you get comfortable with different styles of speaking. Exactly. Conversation podcasts are great because they mimic real-life interactions. You get to hear how people ask questions, respond, and use expressions that are common in everyday speech. Storytelling podcasts, on the other hand, can be a bit more formal. They're usually clearer and slower, which is helpful for learners who want to focus on pronunciation and sentence structure. And there are even podcasts that teach English directly. These are designed specifically for language learners, so they explain things like grammar, pronunciation, and vocabulary. These types of podcasts are a great way to supplement your regular learning, especially if you're studying English on your own. That's true, but I think it's important not to rely only on podcasts that teach English. You should also listen to podcasts on other topics. This way, you can practice your listening skills in a more natural context. Plus, it makes learning more fun because you're learning about things that interest you, not just language rules. Yes, mixing both types of podcasts is the best approach. You get the structured lessons from English learning podcasts, but you also get to practice with real-world content from other podcasts. And like we mentioned earlier, choosing topics you enjoy makes it easier to stick with your listening routine. Another tip that can help is creating a listening schedule. You don't need to listen to a full episode in one go. You can break it down into smaller parts. For example, listen to 10 minutes in the morning and another 10 minutes before bed. Having a set time to listen every day makes it easier to develop a habit. Yes, and don't forget to reward yourself for your progress. It's easy to focus on how much more you have to learn, but take a moment to appreciate how far you've come. Every new word you understand, every sentence you follow, is a victory. Celebrating these small wins keeps you motivated to keep learning. That's a great point, and one thing I like to remind learners is that mistakes are part of the process. You're going to mishear things, misunderstand phrases, or forget new words, and that's completely normal. The important thing is to keep going. The more you listen, the better you'll get, even if it doesn't feel like it at first. Right, it's all about persistence. Language learning is a bit like planting a seed. You won't see results immediately, but if you water it every day, eventually it will grow. Podcasts are a fantastic way to water your English skills, and over time, you'll see your progress. And remember, learning with podcasts doesn't have to be a solo activity. You can join online communities or study groups where people discuss the same podcasts you're listening to. This adds a social aspect to your learning, and you can share tips and experiences with others who are on the same journey. Yes, many podcasts even have their own social media pages or discussion forums where listeners can ask questions and share thoughts. Engaging with these communities is a great way to get more out of each episode. You might learn something new just by reading other people's comments or questions. And if you ever feel stuck, don't be afraid to ask for help. Whether it's asking a teacher, a friend, or even reaching out to the podcast creator, getting feedback is a great way to improve. People are usually happy to help, especially if they see you're working hard to learn. That's so true. Learning a language is a community effort. You don't have to do it alone, and podcasts are just one of the many tools available to help you succeed. So, whether you're just starting out or looking to take your English to the next level, podcasts are a fun, effective, and flexible way to improve your skills. Now that we've explored how to use podcasts effectively for learning English, let's talk about some advanced strategies you can use to really get the most out of your listening experience. One of the first things that comes to mind is turning passive listening into active listening. James, do you know what I mean by that? Oh, 
definitely, passive listening is when you're just letting the podcast play in the background while you do something else, like cleaning or exercising. It's helpful, but active listening takes it to the next level. With active listening, you're more focused, really paying attention to what's being said, and thinking about how you can apply what you hear. Yes, active listening is key if you want to really improve. It's like the difference between reading a book and studying it. When you're actively listening, you're trying to understand every word, every phrase, and even the tone or emotions behind what the speaker is saying. This helps you catch those little details in the language that might otherwise go unnoticed. And here's a practical tip for becoming an active listener. Try listening with a purpose. For example, you could set a goal for each episode, like today, I'm going to focus on learning new vocabulary, or I want to pay attention to how they pronounce difficult words. Giving yourself a specific task makes your listening more intentional, and you'll feel more engaged with what you're hearing. That's such a great idea. Another strategy for active listening is to ask yourself questions while you listen. These questions can be about the content, like what is the main idea of this episode? Or what did the speaker mean by that phrase? You can also ask language-related questions, like how did they form that sentence? Or why did they use this word instead of another? These questions force you to think critically about the language. Exactly. You're not just letting the words wash over you. You're interacting with them in your mind, and if you don't understand something, it's okay to go back and listen again. Repetition is a big part of language learning. The more times you listen to a podcast, the more familiar the language becomes and the more you'll start to recognize patterns. Right. In fact, re-listening is one of the most powerful tools in language learning. Let's say you listen to an episode once just to enjoy it and get the general idea. Then, when you listen again, you can focus on the language. You'll notice new things each time whether it's a word you didn't catch the first time or a grammar structure that you didn't fully understand. It's like peeling back layers to discover more with each listen. That's so true, and I think this is where having transcripts can really help. Some podcasts, especially those for language learners, provide transcripts or even subtitles. Reading along while you listen is a great way to reinforce what you're hearing. You can match the words you see with the sounds you hear, which helps with pronunciation and spelling. Yes, transcripts are such a valuable resource. Even if the podcast you're listening to doesn't provide one, there are other ways to create your own. You can use apps or tools that transcribe audio for you, or you can take notes as you listen. Writing down keywords and phrases you hear helps you stay focused and improves your memory. And if you want to go even deeper, you can practice shadowing. Shadowing is when you listen to a sentence or a phrase from the podcast and try to repeat it immediately after the speaker. It's like following their shadow. This helps with pronunciation, intonation, and fluency because you're mimicking how a native speaker talks. I love the shadowing technique. It really challenges you to keep up with the pace of native speakers, which is great for building fluency. At first, it might feel a little difficult, but with practice, you'll start to notice your speaking speed improve. And don't worry about getting everything perfect at the beginning. The goal is to get used to the rhythm of the language. Exactly. The more you practice shadowing, the more natural it will feel. It's like training your brain and mouth to work together in English. Another thing you can do to make shadowing easier is to break the sentences down into smaller chunks. If a sentence feels too long, just focus on repeating the first few words, then the next few. Over time, you'll be able to follow along with longer and more complex sentences. And speaking of sentences, I think it's also important to pay attention to sentence structure in podcasts. When you're listening, try to notice how speakers form their sentences. Do they use short, simple sentences or longer, more complex ones? Do they ask questions in a particular way? 
Understanding how sentences are built helps you improve both your speaking and writing skills. Yes, and another great tip is to pay attention to how speakers transition between ideas. In real conversations, people often use words like so, then, because, or but to connect their thoughts. These transition words are really important for making your speech sound more natural. When you hear them in a podcast, take note of how and when they're used. You can start using them in your own English conversations, too. That's so true. Transitions make your speech flow more smoothly, and they help you sound more like a native speaker. And another thing to keep in mind is tone of voice. In podcasts, you'll often hear how the speakers change their tone depending on what they're talking about. For example, they might sound excited when they're sharing a fun story or serious when discussing an important topic. This is something you can imitate in your own speech to sound more expressive. Yes, tone and emotion play a huge role in communication. Even if you're saying the right words, the way you say them matters just as much. Podcasts are great because you get to hear how native speakers use their voice to express themselves, and this gives you a chance to practice speaking more naturally. And here's something else to think about don't just stick to podcasts in English. If you listen to podcasts in your native language, you can pick up some great communication skills that you can apply when you speak English. For example, notice how hosts introduce new topics, ask questions, or explain things clearly. You can use these same techniques when speaking English. That's a great point, Sophia. Communication is about more than just language. It's also about how you present ideas and keep a conversation going. Learning these skills in your native language can help you in speaking English because good communication habits are universal. Absolutely. And I think it's also important to remember that learning English through podcasts doesn't have to be serious all the time. You can have fun with it, listen to comedy podcasts, podcasts about movies or TV shows, or even podcasts about hobbies you enjoy. The more fun you have, the more motivated you'll be to keep listening. Yes, having fun is essential. When you enjoy what you're learning, it doesn't feel like work. And podcasts are such a flexible tool that you can really tailor them to your own interests. If you're a fan of sports, there's a podcast for that. If you love cooking, there's a podcast for that too. No matter what you're into, there's a podcast out there that can help you improve your English while keeping you entertained. Exactly. And if you ever feel like you're not making progress, just remind yourself that learning a language is a long-term journey. It's normal to have ups and downs. Some days you'll feel like you're improving a lot, and other days you might feel like you're stuck. But every time you listen to a podcast, you're getting a little bit better, even if it doesn't feel like it in the moment. Yes, and it's important to track your progress. One way to do this is by keeping a journal. After listening to each podcast episode, write down a few things you learned. It could be new vocabulary, grammar points, or even cultural insights. Over time, you'll be able to look back and see how much you've learned, which is really encouraging. That's such a good idea. Journaling helps you reflect on what you've learned and makes it easier to remember key points. Plus, it gives you something to look back on when you're feeling unsure about your progress. You'll be able to see how far you've come, and that will motivate you to keep going. Exactly. And don't forget to celebrate your progress, no matter how small it might seem. Every new word or phrase you understand, every sentence you can follow, it's all part of your journey to mastering English. And podcasts are such a fun and flexible tool to help you along the way. Yes, it's all about consistency and enjoying the process. Keep listening, keep practicing, and most importantly, keep having fun. The more you listen, the more you'll improve, and soon you'll find yourself understanding more and speaking with more confidence. That's the beauty of podcasts. You're learning without even realizing it because you're engaged with the content. It doesn't feel like traditional study, and that's what makes it such a powerful tool for improving your English skills.
Now that we've covered so many tips on using podcasts to improve your English, I want to dive into something that can really make a difference in how much you get out of this learning method, consistency. James, wouldn't you agree that consistency is key to mastering any language? Absolutely. Learning a language, especially English, is like building a habit. The more you do it, the more natural it becomes. Listening to podcasts is a perfect way to keep that habit going. Even if you only have 10 or 15 minutes a day, making time to listen regularly can bring about huge improvements over time. Yes, exactly. It's not about cramming everything in one long session once a week, but rather making it a part of your daily routine. Let's think of it like brushing your teeth you do it every day, right? You can do the same with podcasts. You can listen to a short episode in the morning, maybe while you're having breakfast or commuting to work. Then, in the evening, you could replay the same episode or listen to another one. The more exposure you have to the language, the faster you'll progress. Right, and what's great about podcasts is that they're so flexible. You can listen while you're walking, cooking, or even relaxing. They fit into your life without you having to stop everything else. That makes it easier to stay consistent because you don't have to find extra time. You just incorporate it into your day. Exactly. And speaking of listening consistently, let's talk about how to track your progress. One way to stay motivated and see your improvement is by keeping a language diary. After each podcast, write down some notes about what you learned. You can write about new words, phrases, or interesting ideas you heard. Over time, you'll have a record of your progress, which can be very motivating. That's a fantastic idea. A language diary not only helps you remember what you've learned, but it also gives you a chance to practice your writing skills. Even writing a few sentences in English every day can help reinforce the language. Plus, when you look back after a month or two, you'll be able to see how much your understanding has improved. And that's a great confidence booster. Exactly. It's like a personal learning log. And it doesn't have to be complicated. You can even write down short notes or bullet points if you don't feel like writing full sentences. The point is to reflect on what you've learned. Another idea is to use flashcards. You can write down new vocabulary you hear in the podcast and review the words regularly. Flashcards are a great way to test yourself and make sure you don't forget the new words you're picking up. Flashcards are amazing for vocabulary building. You can use apps on your phone or make your own cards with paper. It's totally up to you. The key is to review them regularly, maybe once or twice a day. Take five minutes to go through your flashcards. That constant review helps the words stick in your memory longer. Absolutely. And speaking of memory, let's talk about another powerful strategy for using podcasts to improve your English, using repetition. We touched on this earlier, but I think it's worth emphasizing. Re-listening to the same podcast episode multiple times might feel repetitive, but it's one of the most effective ways to reinforce what you've learned. Yes, I agree. Listening to an episode once might give you a general idea, but every time you listen again, you'll pick up on new details. Maybe you'll catch a phrase you missed the first time, or you'll understand a grammar structure better. And since you already know the general context, your brain can focus more on the language itself during repeated listens. Exactly. It's like peeling back the layers of an onion you discover more with each listen. Plus, the more familiar you become with the content, the more comfortable you'll feel with the language. And that familiarity will boost your confidence when speaking English. I'd say repetition is one of the most important steps in mastering a language. Totally. Another great thing you can do when re-listening is to try and anticipate what the speaker will say next. This helps you think in English and prepares your brain to respond faster in conversations. For example, if you know what's coming up, try to say the next sentence or phrase along with the speaker. It's like practicing real-time conversation skills. Yes, and that's such an important skill thinking in English. When you listen to podcasts regularly, 
you're exposing yourself to natural English conversations, and your brain starts to process the language without you needing to translate everything. Over time, you'll notice that you start thinking in English, which makes speaking and understanding so much easier. Absolutely. It's all about immersing yourself in the language as much as possible. The more you listen, the more natural it becomes. And if you want to take things even further, you can try summarizing the podcast after you listen. This is a great way to practice both your speaking and writing skills. You can record yourself summarizing the episode or write a short summary in your own words. That's a fantastic exercise. Summarizing helps you organize your thoughts and use the new vocabulary and grammar you've learned. And it's also a good way to test your comprehension. If you can explain what you just listened to, it means you understood it well. Exactly. And don't worry if your summaries aren't perfect. The goal is to practice using English. Over time, you'll get better at expressing yourself. Plus, summarizing helps you retain what you've learned because when you explain something in your own words, it sticks in your memory longer. That's right. And let's not forget the importance of variety in your podcast choices. While it's great to listen to English learning podcasts, it's also important to mix in different types of content. You could listen to news podcasts, podcasts about hobbies or interests you have, or even storytelling podcasts. The variety will keep you engaged and expose you to different types of language. Yes, variety is key. Different types of podcasts expose you to different accents, vocabulary, and styles of speaking. For example, a news podcast might be more formal, while a comedy podcast will have more casual, everyday language. This helps you become more adaptable in real-life situations, whether you're speaking in a professional setting or just chatting with friends. Exactly. And the more diverse your listening experience, the more flexible you'll become in understanding different types of English. Another tip is to sometimes challenge yourself with more difficult content. Even if you don't understand everything, it's okay. The goal is to push yourself a little bit outside your comfort zone because that's where real growth happens. Yes, and you'd be surprised how much your brain can absorb even when you think the content is too difficult. Just hearing native speakers talk at their normal speed using more advanced vocabulary can help you get used to the flow of the language. Over time, what once felt challenging will start to feel easier. Exactly. It's all part of the process. Don't be afraid to make mistakes or not understand everything. The important thing is that you're exposing yourself to the language, and that's how improvement happens. And remember, there are so many resources available, from slow-speed English podcasts to more advanced ones. You can always adjust depending on how confident you feel. Right, and I think that brings us to another important point. Don't be too hard on yourself. Learning a language is a journey, and there will be times when it feels difficult. But if you stay patient and keep listening to podcasts regularly, you'll definitely see progress. That's such an important reminder. Be kind to yourself. Learning English or any language takes time. Podcasts are an amazing tool, but they're just one part of the puzzle. As long as you stay curious, practice consistently, and enjoy the process, you'll keep improving. Exactly, and you're not alone on this journey. There are so many people around the world learning English just like you. By using podcasts, you're already taking a big step toward fluency. The most important thing is to keep going and enjoy the ride. Absolutely. We hope these tips have inspired you to start or continue using podcasts as a fun and effective way to learn English. And remember, it's all about consistency, enjoyment, and making the language a part of your daily life. Yes, and before we go, we'd love to hear from you. What are your favorite English learning podcasts? Do you have any tips that work for you? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We post more tips and lessons to help you on your English learning journey. 
Share this podcast with your friends and family who are also learning English. They might find it helpful too. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. We'll see you in the next episode. Keep learning and remember to have fun with your English. Goodbye and happy learning.